Why do you guys dangerous for games? All right. I've always believed in challenging my own views, playing devil's advocates against myself, and taking time to look at issues from multiple perspectives. That's crazy. Who does that? What the ugh. That's why I held off on talking about this. I just really wanted to make sure I approached this topic carefully. I wanted to ensure that I have all the facts straight and that I represent the casual gaming community well. We're diving into a topic that's been stirring up quite a bit of controversy in the gaming. DEI is viewed as a positive step towards inclusive environment. However, others argue that it can actually stifle creativity and innovation. Today, mm -hmm. I want to explore why DEI might pose to be dangerous for video games and the industry as a whole. This isn't just a surface level. It's dangerous concern. for everything. It's a systemic issue that demands our attention and DEI is dangerous for literally everything because you are taking, you are favoring things that don't matter, like checkboxes that don't matter. You're favoring that over merit. You're favoring that over what is actually good. So like the more that you dilute what is actually good with stuff that doesn't matter, that's how you start to get a degradation in quality. And then, you know, again, this is this is kind of this happens in, in all aspects. It's not just games. It's also in like the workplace, in the government, in everything. Right. Before diving into its direct impact on game, we need to first understand how it's shaping the gaming industry. Well, like I mean, a good way to, to think about it. And I've heard this analogy before. I don't know who made it. I don't know if it was Asmund or someone else, but it, it it's it's pretty accurate. Um, if if you had a doctor, if someone was performing brain surgery on you, do you want the person that's the best, or do you want the person that is also that is gay, right? <laughs> like sometimes they're the same person, and that's fine. If they're the same person, then it doesn't matter because you don't care if they're gay or not. You just care about um, if they're the best. If you had to choose. Is it somebody who is a person of color or the best person? And I prefer the hot doctor. You know what? Okay. You know, you know what? That might soothe your soul, LV. <laughs> that, might, that might soothe your soul. So there's some merit in that. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you're like you're like having brain surgery you like wake up in the middle of it and you're just like and there's like a hot doctor looking at you and they just smile at you and you're just like ah, oh, i can live i'm gonna live guys i'm gonna live for her <laughs> i'm gonna live for her guys the i initiatives aim to achieve put this stuff up to your higher up go have a coffee with she replied to me in chat just with the possibility of what's gonna happen if they don't give you at their core mm. These initiatives seek to create inclusive environments by addressing historical injustices and ensuring diverse representation. While I do believe that the intentions behind DEI are often noble, the implications can be quite serious. Many organizations, including game developers, have implemented- yeah, and, and this is this is the problem that you see happen in everything. This is also occurs in government where people have good intentions for something. Like they're they actually have pretty noble intentions, but they they end up fucking shit up because they don't understand like the system of like how how things operate you know it's like you have like a good idea like oh wow like i have a really good idea to like do this change like it's going to be like an overall good but then it, it it's actually not into dei yeah good in, good intentions about execution yeah exactly DEI astro hoping to create more equity mm -hmm. however mm -hmm. these efforts can inadvertently lead to divisive environment where the focus on diversity usually overshadows other critical values like creativity and innovation while it is important to acknowledge the lasting impact of discrimination there are also many examples of individuals who've overcome these obstacles through hard work mm -hmm. figures like frederick douglas and martin luther king jr uh -huh. championed a vision where people are judged by their character their skin color advocating for equality of opportunity where success is based on merit not race gender or background mm -hmm. equality of opportunity ensures that everyone has the same starting point and access to resources wait hold on wait what did they say opportunity based on merit I hate the consequences of my Hold actions. Up. It's not fair. They're so I might have a problem with this. SMH. Guys, I might have a problem with this. Hold on. Equality of opportunity ensures that everyone has the same starting point. That's not true. That's 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 not true. Not everyone has the same starting point, and I don't think they should. That's just that's just how the world is. And access to resources. That's not true either. Mm -mm. That's not true either because not everyone has access to the same resources. That doesn't mean that you should take resources from other people and give it. You, sh you should take resources from other people that like earned it and then give it to other people. Allowing them to reach their full potential based on their own efforts. However, DEI often shifts the focus. No, no. What, what it should be is that the rules are the same for everyone. Does that make sense? The rules are the same for everyone. It's not that, it's not that resources are allocated um, according to like... It, 
you don't you don't mess with the resources to give people like i mean you could do things like for instance like you have um maybe like a sponsorship or something like that but uh creating a system in which that occurs is not a good idea um because you're just stealing from people right you're, you're stealing you're stealing from people that have earned it uh, and, and you know this this kind of falls apart really easily like if you go to like a uh, there was a video i saw i don't know who did it but they were like at a college campus and they basically said like um i have an idea um, what's your GPA? And they're like, oh, you know, it's like, I don't know, 4.0 or whatever. And they're like, well, there's like another person here who has like a 3.0. Like, would you give him half of, would you give him like half of a point so that he can have like a higher and then you can both be like 3.5? And they're like, no, but I, pay, I I worked hard for it. Like, well, yeah, that applies to money too. And, and that's not to say that there are going to be people in this world that have, that do start at a higher, in that like a more privileged position, right? There are people. There, there are people that do that do start at um at at a higher position, but in a lot of cases, like you know, their family did work for that, and you know, it depends how far back you want to go, because you know, you can you can always go all the way back and be like, oh well, they did like these kind of morally like disgusting things to like actually get to that point. You know, that's like what their ancestors from like a long time ago. So it's like how far back you want to go, and you can just play this game like all the way all the way back into into like ancient history. One has the same starting point and access to resources, allowing them to reach their full potential based on their own efforts. Mm -hmm. However, DEI often shifts the focus to equality of outcome, mm -hmm. aiming to ensure similar results for everyone, regardless of individual effort. This shift can have significant implications for the gaming industry and beyond. Mm -hmm. For instance, <laughs> if game development teams prioritize diversity quotas over skill and experience, they may inadvertently hire less qualified individuals mm -hmm. simply to meet those quotas. This and, and, and like, I've literally seen this before, you guys. I've I've actually seen this happen at like game companies where like there would be like one person really good and like they've been really like working hard and like they've they've been producing good stuff and you have another person who like completely fucks up at what they're doing the the entire thing like doesn't work and then it's like but like who should who should get the job should it be the person who like has been working really hard and has been producing really good stuff or the person that failed at their job which of the two should get the should get should get the position? The obvious choice is like, oh, the person who was working really hard and like produced really good stuff, not the person that failed. But then it's like, well, but the person that failed is a woman. Oh, okay, give them the job, and it happens all the time. I've seen it happen. This could compromise the. Quality I won't be gaslit. I won't be gaslit. I I literally have seen this happen. Produced and frustrate both creators and consumers. When the focus shifts from talent to demographic representation, the risk of creating a mediocre, less innovative product increases as new ideas and perspectives may be overlooked in favor of fulfilling diversity mandates. Historically, movements toward greater equality have often focused on improving access and opportunity rather than enforcing equal outcomes. Critics mm -hmm. of the current DEI trend argue that by shifting to an outcome-based framework, organizations may lose sight of their original goal that so many incredible people have fought so hard to achieve, to provide a level playing field. Moreover, this emphasis on equality of outcome can create a backlash among those who feel that their own hard work and achievements are being diminished or disregarded. This tension can lead to division within teams and communities as individuals begin to view one another through- The funny thing is, here's like another uh, another thing where it's an unintended side effect, but the problem is like, say, say you have like group A, I'm, I'm, I'm just gonna use like group A and group B just so I don't have anyone like on my ass about like, oh, like she said some shit about like some race. Like I'm not, this just has nothing to do with it. It could be literally anything. It could be goblins for all I care, right? In, in in one hand you have group a and then other hand you have group b and then say with group b they're like there's not enough group b on the project so we're gonna lower our standard you know we, we want to specifically hire people from group b so basically when you make a hiring consideration you're only hiring people from group b regardless of their skill level right obviously you want the highest highest skill level within group b right but that doesn't really say who's actually the best right the problem with this is now you create a situation. Now you're faced with someone from group B as like a different person. So you're, you're outside of this whole selection process, but you look at it and you are aware of the selection process. And now you're like, this person from group B, did they get hired because they're good? Or did they get hired because they're from group B? 
Does that make sense? So now you're actually creating a situation where people are racist. Do you see what I mean? B- because you, because you, because that's the pattern. That's the pattern that you're enforcing, right? It, 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 that is actually like structurally creating that pattern. That's the funny thing is they're actually creating racism by doing this. Through the lens of Mm-mm. demographic categories rather than as unique contributors. In summary, while I do believe DEI initiatives are often well-intentioned, the shift from equality of opportunity to equality of outcome can have significant and far-reaching consequences. In the gaming industry, this shift risks compromising the quality of creative output and can create division among developers and players alike. Mm -hmm. I really believe that by focusing on merit and individual potential, rather than simply achieving demographic targets, the industry can foster a culture of true inclusivity that celebrates the diverse contributions of all individuals. If you have a piece of glass lodged in your foot, it doesn't help for the doctor to just put a plaster on it and call you a bigot for not agreeing with him <laughs> that this will fix the issue. Yeah. The doctor needs to tackle the problem at its roots. And while I th- this is actually not just gaming. This is a problem throughout everything, every aspect of life is a lot of the times people will solve a symptom rather than the root problem. And this is like this actually like this is actually something that does keep me up at night. It is one of the things that makes it hard for me to sleep is I think about this all the time. And for me, it's mostly gaming because gaming is kind of like my my thing. Right. I think about design. I'm like, dude, they fi- I mean, how many times have you guys seen it? How many times have you guys seen a patch that fixed the symptom but had no nothing to do with the actual underlying problem and it's just band-aid and then another band-aid and then like that f- fuck something up uh, f- fuck something else up oh let's put another band-aid on it another band-aid another band-aid and now you have this fucking m- monstrous like monstrous tumor that is not solved and that's how like games like they 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 fuck up and they break everything you understand and sympathize with the perspective of those pushing for DEI, the reality is that these initiatives can sometimes feel like that plaster, a temporary solution. Julio says it's like old league characters that had a bad kit, they only changed some characters. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, the character is too strong, well, not nerf them then. Or the character is too weak, uh, buff them then. Just change the numbers, just make it higher. But it, it, it lacks a fundamental understanding of like, why is that character bad? It's not always because their numbers are 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 tuned poorly it, it's it's a bunch of different factors and it, it's 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 much easier to see that problem and be like oh well I'll just increase the numbers a bit that's like easy to do compared to like yo let's sit this down let's look at it why is this character bad how is its interactions with the other characters what is its niche what is the player psychology who's playing this this character what skill set does this fit in there's 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 so many things that connect to like why a character is bad or good in a specific game doing all of that stuff and digging underneath to find the roots of the problem is so much harder than just increasing some numbers and that's why you see a lot of really bad balance and that's kind of my balance my 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 game balance philosophy is like i want to know i want to understand why it sucks and if you look at like a lot of like my designs you can see what i'm talking about that's why that's why my designs are like are are the way that they are because it'll be like oh like this character's op and then you'll see me do like some really weird fucking change you're like why the fuck would she do that and it's because i thought about it like why is this character good or why is this character bad in whatever scenario and how do i like shift it into a way that that works um that that makes them stronger in the scenarios that they're weaker in, but makes them more balanced in the situations that they are super good in. So then you have something that doesn't feel um, like, mm, I guess just feel bad. I could go into it. There's a, there's, there's a lot more involved there that um, would take me a long time to talk about, but. That doesn't address the deeper societal wounds. I cannot deny that the push for DEI at its core is often a response to historical and ongoing inequalities and the hurt that comes from real experiences of discrimination. However, we need to be careful that in our efforts to fix these problems, we're not just covering them up superficially. Real healing Mm -hmm. and real progress comes from addressing the systemic issues at their core. For me, I believe this means focusing on equality of opportunity, education, economic empowerment, and creating a society where people are judged based on their abilities and character. With that being said, I strongly believe that DEI is doing a major disservice to itself and Mm -hmm. everyone it affects. By focusing on metrics like representation quotas... I actually... I actually think that DEI is making people more racist. It'd probably be a while, like, I'd have to think about that and, like, actually, like, to explain why it would take a bit. I really do think so. 
differences or attempting to guarantee equal outcomes, DEI often misses the real issues. It risks creating environments where individuals are seen first by their demographics rather than talents <laughs> or achievement. Exactly, that's which, the opposite. Is you don't want people to be seen. You want you want people to be seen for the content of their character, not the the color of their skin or who they want to fuck or what they want to be. You know what I mean? Like that's what I mean ironically reinforces the very divisions it seeks to eliminate exactly Dude, this is a good video genuine inclusion this guy gets these it. initiatives can lead to tokenism resentment and a sense of unfair i think his wording was a little a little off earlier i will admit but i think his heart's in the right place i think this definitely what he's saying makes sense uh, I, I don't know that, that that wording is a little bit hard to do i think this where some feel overlooked because their merits are secondary to fulfilling diversity targets ultimately we should be striving for a system where people no matter their background rise based on their effort skill and contributions anything mm -hmm. less undercuts the very ideals of fairness and equality that dei claims to promote now how is this directly affecting games as we consider the implementation of DEI, That's right. <laughs> we encounter significant risks within the gaming industry. One major concern is the creative limitations imposed. Dude, I'm telling you guys, like if Concord comes back, I'm gonna fucking play it. I'm gonna play it right away. I'm gonna play it day one. I just I wanna experience it. You know, I wanna I wanna feel I wanna I wanna know what it's like. I wanna know what it's like to play it. On developers. When narratives prioritize political That's right. correctness over authentic storytelling, we risk alienating players who seek immersive experiences. A case in point is The Last of Us Part 2, which faced backlash for its heavy-handed approach to social issues, leaving some players feeling that the gameplay experience- Well, not only that is it feels so fake. You know what I mean? Like, every time they do this, it just feels so fucking fake. Was detracted by the messaging. And as I mentioned in a previous video, Battlefield 5 was criticized for its focus on diversity in a historical World War II setting, leading to mixed receptions from fans. Again, the way this was done was quite heavy handed. Instead of celebrating the incredible real contributions that women actually- Yo, what the fuck, dude? She has like a, like a dude. Do they have that shit in World War II? That's crazy. Or World War One? Is this World War One? I? I don't know. It looks like World War One. Do they have this shit in World War One? Actually made in World War Two. The focus shift. He's right. We play fire hula. You don't need to fill the line. <laughs> <laughs> to portraying them in traditionally male roles as if it was a more valuable way to recognize their efforts games that prioritize social agendas over actually i actually um i'm gonna be real i personally like it because like i get to play a waifu to be honest i'm i'm okay with it but i guess if you were like trying to be like we are super historical and then you did it then it's kind of weird i will admit storytelling can fail to resonate with audiences hurting both sales and overall engagement it's crucial that we focus on merit and individual talent rather I don't want to play that waifu. Is it bad? Oh, no. Other than identity. Promoting environments where everyone can rise based on their skill and hard work is essential for a thriving gaming industry. This approach <clears throat> honors the principle of equality of opportunity, allowing diverse voices to contribute without being constrained by demographic targets. Mm -hmm. When we celebrate achievements based on merit, we foster a culture that values innovation, creativity, and excellence over identity politics. An example would be the upcoming Assassin's Creed Shadows. Set in a rich historical context, the game promises an immersive experience. However, some fans worry that DEI-driven pressures could push the developers to emphasize diversities in ways that feel inauthentic to the setting. Instead of naturally weaving mm -hmm. diversity into the narrative, there's a concern that these efforts might compromise the the historical accuracy and storytelling depth that longtime players expect from the franchise. This tension highlights the broader risk that DEI initiatives can create, producing games that feel more like checkbox exercises than creative engaging works. If DEI is to truly benefit the gaming world, it needs to respect both the diverse talent involved in game development and the authenticity that players value. Kotaku, which is a major player in gaming journalism, has been criticized for its overemphasis on identity politics and DEI-driven content. Mm -hmm. In recent years, their coverage has increasingly focused on- Does anyone even take them seriously? I feel, I feel like it's just like a meme at this point. I don't think anyone actually like looks at them as like any sort of reliable journalism.
social issues rather than games themselves. While we all know raising awareness about diversity is important, it is obvious that Kotaku has annoyed a lot of gamers who feel that the platform is prioritizing political agendas over authentic gaming journalism. This has led to the loss of credibility among gamers, developers, and content creators who are looking for insightful reviews and industry news, not lectures on social. Damn, you know, I thought about it. I thought about like making a review channel, just like a no, no bullshit, like actual, actual review about like the game design, you know, the game design and like the story and stuff like that, like actually taking the game for like its merits. But then I thought it would take too much time. I can do that or I can or I can do a web novel and I, I, I always want to do dude I wish dude I wish I had like that freaking uh Hermine Hermione Nini freaking like uh freaking time turner or whatever thing I, I wish I had that then I could do everything but um I'm barely sleeping as it is justice. Another prime example of this is Sweet Baby Inc., a consulting firm hired by Ubisoft to handle narrative development for their games. Sweet Baby Inc. is a DEI-focused company that promises to bring underrepresented voices to the forefront of gaming oh, narratives. While this sounds like it could be a positive step, the result has been that some of Ubisoft's recent games and upcoming games have faced criticism for feeling disjointed or overly politically correct. Priority diversity checkboxes you know why you, you want to know why think about this guy just think about this what is the type of person that would work at sweet baby see if you had a company that was oh our whole point is to amplify um or amplify the voices of of um minority people and uh minority experiences what kind of people would work there it's the people that care about that sort of about the checkboxes. So obviously it would be a company that would have the perspective of people that that um, it, it, they have the perspective of people that care about that stuff. And that's like their main thing that they focus on. Ironically, racists, actually. <laughs> over coherent, engaging storytelling. Gamers have voiced concerns that Ubisoft's partnership with DEI-focused consultants like Sweet Baby Inc. has led to games that feel like they've lost their soul, catering to an agenda rather than their core audience. In both these cases, between Kotaku and Sweet Baby Inc., we see the direct consequences of DEI initiatives. When diversity is prioritized over narrative depth or gameplay quality, the end product will always suffer, and ultimately so does the gaming experience. Uh, I am the crazed CEO of Sweet Baby Inc., the DEI-obsessed censorship mafia. Sweet Baby Inc. CEO demonizes white gamers. Well, did she? Did she? Who is currently ruining and wokeifying all of the video games that you've ever played. What, what the fuck? That's so weird. Hold on, that is so weird. I just, I just caught all of the video games that you've ever obsessed censorship mafia who is currently ruining and wokeifying all of the video. Currently ruining and wokeifying all the video games. And I get that she's being funny here. Yeah. She's trying to, she's trying to, you know, she's taking the shot. Games that you've ever played. Haha, <laughs> get it? It's me, guys. The, 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 the witch. <laughs> and the crowd is like, yeah! Like, whoa, 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 guys. That was a joke. You're not supposed to applaud. Well, guys, what the fuck? <laughs> I was like, dude, it just makes me think. It's like, um, it's like you're, you're like that that ironic person that like walks into the room and you're like, yeah, I really hate those people. And everyone's like, yeah, me too. You're like, wait, I was just kidding. <laughs> I was just kidding, guys. Stop standing up. Stop. Guys, don't raise a glass to me. I was just trolling. I was trolling, guys. <laughs> Of the frustrations with how DEI is often little yeah. in gaming <laughs> is that it feels condescending. As if the people pushing Thank these you. mandates oh, assume yeah. that gamers like me Thank lack the talk. intelligence or critical thinking to engage with complex social themes on our own. It sometimes comes across as though we're being spoon-fed ideas in the simplest, most heavy-handed ways. It's almost like they're treating us like toddlers mm. in a preschool. Well, rather... well, the thing is, too, is a lot of the times, um, this is my personal gripe as like a tabletop, like an enjoyer of anime and good stories. Um, one of my big gripes is when they, they, they DEI something to add in a way that doesn't make sense. It's also like the reason why you see me like, uh, it's not necessarily like only DEI is this problem. Uh, you can see it in like my Sword Art Online rants, like every, uh, every announcement of every stream. I've been kind of ranting about Sword Art Online because none of it makes sense. And, and that's the problem with a lot of, uh, 
a lot of this when they insert like DEI stuff into it, it, it removes your suspension of disbelief because none of it makes sense. Uh, a good example is uh, wheel wheelchair accessible dungeons from Dungeons and Dragons. Um, the, they, they had an, like official, an official Dungeons and Dragons thing where they're like, yeah, like heroes in wheelchairs and heroes in wheelchairs and wheelchair accessible dungeons. Like what's like the, the fucking Lich King? Like minions, you will build me a dungeon and I will rule with an iron fist. But sir, what about what about the, the, the wheelchair adventures? Our dungeon will be built wheelchair compliant. Like, what the fuck is this? Like, what the, what the fuck? You know, like, that doesn't make sense. Okay, first off, that's number one that doesn't make sense. And, you know, I can go on, on, on a whole Sword Art Online rant about this. But one, that doesn't make sense. And two, wait, you're telling me you live in a world, there's fucking wizards that can raise the dead? And you're in a fucking wheelchair? You don't have, like, some kind of mechanical freaking walker that you're going around on? Or, or you know, just fix your legs? Like, what? what is this? You're not floating around? Like, you're not using, like, some levitate spell to fly around? Like, are you fucking kidding me? Like, what, what's going on here? Than being a community filled with diverse, thoughtful players. Like, it, 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 it ruins your immersion because it, it doesn't, it doesn't, none of it makes sense. It, I mean, um, even if you want to go into the Rainbow Six example, oh, you have a, you have a woman in a wheelchair that has, like, autonomous robots that she can control remotely, but she can't have, like, an automatic wheelchair? Like, I, what? Like, what? going on you know like, i don't i don't get it it doesn't it doesn't i don't i don't know for example the apex legends season 12 trailer which showcased non-binary and lgbtq plus characters while i can understand you're trying to create representation many players felt that these additions were more about marketing tactics than natural character development this tick the box approach wait, what game was this not only feels oh, wait, 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 what game was can this detract from Guys, what game was this? Tick the bore about marketing, trying to create representation. It's an Apex. Many players felt that these additions were more about marketing. Doesn't Apex like already have like a like a game? Isn't uh, the 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 Titanfall girl the the one that like her 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 dad or whatever was in Titanfall? Wasn't she gay? Uh, uh Rensit. Oh my God, Rensit. Thank you so much for the sub, dude. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, doesn't she have it? Then natural character development. The well, the problem is when they throw it, they throw it at you for like no reason, out of nowhere. Like like they they they, they like put it like so in your face and like out of nowhere you're like what the fuck like i thought we were killing each other in this game you know what i mean like a, a, a good example i think of one that they did do right was um i really like Raze and uh killjoy from um valorant where it was it's not like a big deal but it's like shown in like some side stuff right because it's not important to like their characters like that they've well unless it is important i mean it might be like it like for instance you've had like one character that has like interactions with another character like in the game um specifically related to like a romantic relationship then like it would matter it's like a battle royale game we're shooting each other you know this tick the box approach not only feels disingenuous but can it, it, detract it from the immersive experiences that games are supposed to offer mm -hmm. for sure transitioning that was sort of hard in conclusion while de oh it's because it's a trans care okay i may have mm -hmm. well-meaning intentions its Fair execution enough. almost always misses the mark as casual gamers developers and content creators we must critically assess these initiatives and recognize their potential harm to the industry we love the shift from equality of opportunity to equality of outcome risks stifling creativity, alienating players, and ultimately harming the quality of games. Let's foster a culture that values individual talent and creativity. See, like, I, I don't really, I don't really have a problem with them having like a like a trans character. Really, I really don't. Um, it's just, it's just the way it's presented. Is it's so like in your face, right? Like it's so, it's so much better if it's like it doesn't even talk about it. And then like maybe there's like some sort of like comic book or some kind of side thing or like maybe like an in-game event that relates to that character that like might have something about it where like they directly relate to like something that occurs in in the story that makes that obvious that makes that now a part of the story but like the fact like them making it like this is the first thing about the character like hey here's this character and you want to know what they're it's like apex apex legends new character Oh yeah, what what abilities do they have? What weapon do they have? They're trans. They're trans. Yeah, they, they have a gun. Yeah. Or they did have a gun. Not anymore. ...over identity politics. By doing so, we can ensure that the gaming industry continues to innovate and thrive without being hindered by divisive <laughs> narratives. 
guys, thank you so much for watching and listening to me meander about the right. and my <laughs> perspective of it. I really appreciate it. If you found this discussion valuable and would like to see more or hear more from me, please do subscribe. Also, do let me know your thoughts in the comments as well. How do you feel about DEI in gaming? Again, I also want to say thank you so much for disabled, all the support yeah. I've received and a very special thank you to Admin. <laughs> you know what this reminds me of? Does anybody remember like the old... Um, like the old like uh oh god what was this from this was like from like the like the it might have been like the late 2000s era where they had like a joke of like like a girl having like uh having like issues is like cute B basically like uh like oh like you know she's disabled so it's like kind of cute because you want to take care of her people made a character that was like had everything like i think like they had like an eye patch they had like an iv like a wheelchair they had like literally everything <laughs> like they just put all of all of the disabilities in like one character no, it wasn't Katawa Shoujo. It was something else. Oh, man. It was like real, dude. Dude, like it's, it's uh, man. The problem is like, I'm, I, I don't really like super lewd stuff. I don't really like super lewd stuff. So I was really happy that um, I didn't really have to deal with that in Katawa Shoujo because all of the sex scenes were disabled by default. Gold for encouraging me on my last videos. I'll catch you guys in the next one. That's a good one. Yeah, I I really hey, I really like this. I I, I I want to see more videos from. I hope they keep releasing. Oh, they only have. Oh yeah, this is a new channel, right? They just started this channel. Uh, yeah, I'm looking forward for to more content from from Pata. Actually, give them a give them a give them a like and a sub. I I want to see more of this.